Hey, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today in the Wells Tech Garage for this week's episode of Wells Counterpoint. I'm joined here today by Jeremy from our cataloging department. Thanks for being here. No problem, Mike, no problem. So uh, what are we working on today? What's in front of us here? Um, what we're gonna talk about today, you can see the weather's changing a little bit. We got some yeah, snow out there. it's that um, time of year. We're gonna start talking about four wheel drive actuators. Okay. Um, unfortunately, you know, when it's summer out, most people aren't testing them out. <laughs> sure. now, when the, now when the snow starts flying, we start getting calls on these okay. things that their four wheel yeah. drive's not working. So. We've got some roughly late 80s to mid 90s uh, GM vehicle actuators we're going to talk about today. Now, okay. where would these be located, these particular? Yeah, actuators? these are the actual differential actuator. These are the ones that are threaded right into the front differential on these. Remember, on those GM trucks and SUVs, they're kind of a, a two-step process. You have your transfer case um, shift motor or you have your, you know, your handle in there that's going to shift it into four-wheel drive. That would engage the, the front drive shaft. And then from there, you need something in the front differential to engage those two axles that go out to either side. That's what these actuators here do. Right. So what we're going to do is talk about how, you know, the similarities, differences about okay. these guys here. Because so right here we got... These two, these two right here actually go on the same range of vehicles, right? Exactly. Okay. Yep. yep. So this is the SW2084. Okay. I'll you that one. And then this is the SW8134. Uh, one thing you're going to notice, obviously, they look very similar. Sure, they pretty yeah. much look identical. Uh, but you're going to notice that the connectors are different. Okay. Um, when General Motors first came out with these vehicles, when they first came off the assembly line, these were the two options. You had the flat terminals yep. and the round terminals. All right. Um, you're going to notice now you can't get the flat terminal from General Motors anymore. Oh, really? So, yeah, but that's where this uh, bulletin is going to come in. And okay. We'll talk about it. I'll let but you talk about it. But we still offer this. We, do, we do still offer this as a direct replacement if you don't want to do... Um, this, this is what we're going to talk about next in regards to the bulletin. Okay, and this bulletin here was written back in, uh, dated at September of 98, and it's talking about the condition being some owners may comment that in colder outside temperatures, like, like we have today, uh, the front drive axle takes longer than normal to engage when selected, or the front axles don't engage at all. And uh, the cause of this was determined to be the front axle engagement actuator, which would be this here or, or this one, depending on that axle code that you have. And the fact that it's a thermally activated component, and because of this characteristic, the time required to complete the four-wheel drive engagement is extended as the temperature drops. Right. Basically, there's a, a gas in here of okay. some sort, and when it, you know, when it gets cold out, it thickens and it doesn't it takes engage longer. as quicker as, as sure. it should. Um, so it will still engage. It just takes longer than normal. So really, the reason why we still offer this is because the part itself functions like it's supposed exactly. to. Exactly. A lot of people just want to, they don't want to do the upgrade. They just want to plug it in and okay. go. So we okay. still offer that version, as well as people in warmer climates. You sure. Know, if they're just using it for, yeah. for mudding purposes or sure, whatever. Sure, yeah, you're, you're going through the Baja or something. This will right. work just fine yeah, for you. Yeah, worry about it being cold. So. Right. Okay, and now you said that there is a there's a correction, there's an upgrade. What do we the, have there? Yeah, this is the SW2085. Now, this will come in into play if, like, let's say you've let's you know between '88 and 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 now, it's mm -hmm. chances are you may have already had this done. Sure. Somebody that may have already done this upgrade. Okay. This will be a direct replacement for that upgrade that's already been done. Okay. As well as this one, also right off the assembly line, came on some newer GM vehicles as well. Okay. Um, it'll fit up to some 2014 um, GM GM trucks as well. All right. So, so SUVs. GM kind of phased out these guys here. Right. Went with that one and then made it available to upgrade either of these to that newer electronic motor design Correct. versus these older thermally activated uh, piston type design here. Right, and one thing to keep in mind with these and in your bulletin, I'll let mm -hmm. you talk about that a little bit, but there is, you can't just put this in place of that. You will need a harness that okay. will need to be purchased um, from your local dealer. Sure, sure. The part will physically install a little thread right into the same hole in the differential, but there's gonna be some other components. Depending on your axle code, you might need a spacer, you might need a harness, you might need a relay. It's all gonna depend on what it, uh, what it says in this, uh, what is this here, about 10 pages worth of bulletin information. Uh, all depending on the year, make, model of your vehicle and the axle code on the front, that three digit lettered code. You can find that typically right on the front axle uh, differential right. itself, right on a little tag on there. 
right. So, um, basically, and, and if you're just wanting to do a direct replacement, mm -hmm. you still have this style. Sure. The, only, the, the easiest way to tell a lot of times, even easier than getting the axle code sometimes, mm -hmm. just look at your connector. If it's okay. got the flat terminals, you need the SW8134. Sure. And if it's got the round terminals, this one actually belongs over here, okay. that's the SW2084. <laughs> so, Okay. That's the easiest, easiest way to tell rather than trying Sure, to... and if you, have the, uh, if you have the plastic one underneath there, you know, both of these are aluminum. If you have the plastic one underneath there, somebody's already done the upgrade, just get that one's direct replacement and it has a five pin connector on it. Right, exactly. It's okay. pretty, pretty distinctive from the other two. So. And um, all the newer vehicles are, are, most of the newer vehicles are running that updated right. design as yep. well mm -hmm. because it's not affected by temperature. So. I guess that's probably about it for today, I think that's right? about it, yeah. I guess just to sum it up, guys, if you're running into cold climate issues where your front axles aren't engaging, your, your four-wheel drive's not working in cold climates, and you still have one of these under there, one of these older aluminum thermally activated designs, you can install this electronic motor design um, as an upgrade, and uh, that should take care of all your cold climate problems and bring your four-wheel drive back to, back to functioning as normal. Um, but this part is still purchasable and replaceable. Yeah. It's just has it just has issues in cold weather. Exactly, it'll work, it'll function just fine. It's just um, the engagement of your four-wheel drive might be a little a little delayed. All right, sounds good. So I think that's about it for today, guys. So thanks for joining us again in the Wells Tech Garage, right. and uh, Thank we'll you. we'll see you guys again next time. Thank you. Thank you.